I be say I be doing too much. Oh, I be fucking doing too much. Just say the fucking intro. All right, all right. So what's up? Yes, the conversation for today is colorism, and it came up because the documentary came up again on the OWN Network on Dark, Girl, Dark Girls. You might have seen it long ago. You might have seen it recently. If you haven't seen it at all, I'll link it below. But then I sat down with someone who wishes to remain anonymous, but the conversation was good nonetheless. And we just chit chatted about this topic. So take a listen to our little, you know, talk and uh, leave your comments, leave your experiences, your thoughts on this. By all means, you know, I like to continue the conversation. This is not all that I focus on. I know that in this climate, it's a heavy topic and these things are, these are the things that are coming up. But of course I do skits. You know, I bring the acting and the the entertainment of the edutainment to you as well. So be on the lookout for the next skit that I have coming up. Dr. More or Less will be back soon, but be on the lookout for the other skits that I have coming up in the meantime. However, um, this one was fresh on on topic because it came across my feed and I wanted to, to watch it again. Sorry, eating. But it's still so relevant. So just take a listen, leave your thoughts. After the documentary, I'll just have some closing remarks. Oops. So the discussion will follow. This is a very short artistic break. See y'all in a bit. Oh, you see it. Her blackness, it's what so proudly you held as this nation's scar. As less than human despite being the genesis, you remember this. How in the beginning there was darkness, birthing a million nations, she be the greatest mother. The yes ma'am on your tongue, ye to which you say amen, she is not the bruise you choose to cover up. Band aid we need to level up, to heal, to be the mother of all there is, was, and will be a reminder that even at your twilight's last gleaming, she will still be there, being everything. So, yes, we're <laughs> talking about dark girls. Uh, part one, I guess, mm -hmm. from Oprah, the Oprah Winfrey Network. And what did you think of the show? I mean, or the episode? I thought it was insightful. And it's not something I thought of too much until moving to Texas. I think it wasn't as in my face, per se. The whole colorism piece. Oh, you said that wasn't as much in your face until you got to Texas? Uh-huh. Hmm. And maybe that's because I am lighter and didn't have those kind of discussions. Maybe until I got, you know, to school and all that. Yeah, that's why I think I wanted to really... Like, when I thought about it and I said, hey, I want to talk about that episode. I think it was because... One, it was just like a really good topic. And two, well, so many things. It was a good topic. And it was also <laughs> another one of those non-historical moments. You know what I mean? That That's making history. Because it's like, oh, we're having this conversation again. We're still having to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. This conversation is still important. Still very relevant. Still very like sad and troubling. And three, I was like, I knew already, I knew already that I was going to resonate with so much of whatever was going to be said. Mm -hmm. It's like an automatic, you know how black people just know already to, you know, be hesitant of, you know, cops or things of that nature. We know already the story, you know, we know already, you know, what the experience might look like, you know, mm -hmm. unless you're like Candace Owens or something, you know. <laughs> Well, it were, oh, sorry, go ahead. But yeah, it's like for dark skinned girls, as soon as you see that, you just. It's crazy how the experiences are. What was the word I'm looking for? Um, Similar, the same, overlapping. <clears throat> yeah, like 
it's so rare that you get a dark skin girl. I don't even know if any of them in the show had a positive experience except for outside of their own culture, but then not completely. You and know not, what I mean? And then it seemed not really until they were adults either. Exactly. Or in past their formative years. <clears throat> but this reminds me of, because, um, you know, my mom was talking about the trip to Rwanda. And in Rwanda, they had the, well, let me go further back. The The colorism and colonialism reminds me of the aspect of how they train elephants. And from a very young age, they have them tied up to the whatever post and they can't really go anywhere. And so when they get to adulthood or whatever, you know, get to a certain point, all they have to do is put the little rope around their leg and they're still imprisoned in a sense. And it's like colon colonization put that rope and they left and left us with the rope. <laughs> And it's clearly still working for us to work against each other in a sense or stand against our uni uniting in a way. So, and I get that, you know, the rope is still on our ankles, so to speak, even though no one's holding the rope, but, or we're not tied to a rope, but I think in a sense we are tied to a rope. Right. That's kind of, kind of like this whole racism thing. But mm -hmm. even before that, even before that, because I was saying as soon as I saw the title, I knew I was going to resonate with this. And I'm like, and I guess that was your first thought about it. But I don't I'm wondering about like really what did you think you were going to resonate with it or if anything. And I'm and I'm guessing I'm hearing no. Because they were talking about how this is like everywhere, you know, right. Mm -hmm. They were saying that this is. In all parts of the, the world, and you've been to so many places, yet you're saying that the colorism thing hadn't really had an impact, I don't think, or it was something you even noticed until Texas, but I'm kind of confused on that. Like, if we notice racism, why not colorism, right? Can you make that make sense for me? Because I want to mm -hmm. know, like, how... it. I guess it goes back to me, in a, me being in a position where I wouldn't be aware, but somebody who was darker complected being more aware. I don't know if that makes sense. So did you think that for the most part, black people were all unified on that front? Like if you're black, you're black, right? There's no, there's no perceived hierarchy based on the shade of black. I don't think I gave it that much thought. See, and so therein lies the privilege, you know what I mean? And I don't know if anyone spoke on that, but, you know, we all have privilege in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's like a privilege there in that I get to be, you know, ignorant to that struggle, you know, from Jump Street. And meanwhile, you got kids, like you saw how young the little girl was and... Everyone else was talking about their stories of being two, I think two and four, their, or their kids being that age, already like dealing with the stigma of not just being black, but being dark skinned black. And it's so crazy because I was thinking about doing um, a skit or something. It was going to focus on the fetishizing of oneself while also self-hating. Can you fetishize yourself, right? And and if so, can you also hate yourself? Wait, how do you fetishize yourself? So that's can you what explain I, that? So that's what I'm saying. Like, can you? That was the question, right? Is um, that where somebody might over-sexualize themselves as a way to uh, fill the gap of self-esteem and insecurity? Yeah, that would probably be another good example I could see of someone just kind of, you know, portraying, you know, it out of self-love, right? Or or self-acceptance, 
right? And, and freedom empowerment. and empowerment, right? Under the guise of all these things because people make these things look good and people admire these things. You know, these are the mm-hmm. things that people boast about, um, especially when it comes to body positivity and owning your own head. And for some reasons, for some people that might be the case and for others it might be the guise. Or you know how there's this whole, and what I was really coming from, because I, you hear so many black men, just like we heard in the video, who don't do black, dark-skinned women. They can't be standing next to them. And you do black as not yourself. And you know what I mean? Even um, even the, the girl whose sister said, you know, I'm glad the baby wasn't uh, dark. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, just all these different mm-hmm. things. And so you know how they think about you. But when it comes to the, the man, right, they have this, this whole dull, tall, dark, and handsome you know, image and this fetish and people love to live up to that and the chocolate men are always in and, you know, they get a lot of hype for that. People fetishize about them Mm -hmm. or about just about that, that whole image, the whole perception of the tall, dark and handsome and the strong guy and big dick guy. And you know what I mean? Like for (laughs) real, like all these things and, you know, the men themselves some of them are to the point where they say that they love being tall, dark, and handsome, right? They, mm-hmm. they love, you know, feeling smooth, looking smooth, and they went and change it at the same time. And this is where the self-hate will come in. They say the shit like, but I don't want a dark-skinned baby. You know what I mean? Mm. So so it's like basking in but the ambiance. Yeah, but um, I, won't, I won't change in the myself. ambiance of admiration right of this little piece, Of this little piece that they loving me for. Mm-hmm. Not everything, but this is the little piece they loving me for. Which on the flip side, the same piece that they hate me for. But I'm going to just ignore that because I, I need the love. I need the love. And they give me the love here. I'm tall, dark, and handsome. I'm fucking sexy. I'm chocolate. All right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what, you know, And but then at the same time, but I don't want no black babies. And mm-hmm. I don't want, or dark babies, or whatever the case may be. So you're still... It's essence of self <laughs> Hey, does it come? I don't. I wonder. Does it come from a place of self hate or not wanting the child to go through what they went through? So yeah, so and, and is that the... still self hate? If I know it doesn't make the outcome any better because at the end of the day, the outcome is I don't want a dark baby like myself, or you know what I'm saying? Like the outcome doesn't change. I'm curious of the underlying. Like, is it a self hate or is it my trauma going through this? I wouldn't wish that on my child and I have no way to truly protect them from it other than to now having experienced it. And if I've maybe worked through it or have an understanding, arm them with that self-love and that acceptance of self so that people haven't changed. about Right. We still you know have I mean? a like, responsibility. So, <laughs> you know, and if we understand that, then there's still more so a root of like self hate there because if we're going to struggle in some way, shape, form or fashion, you can't protect us from all struggle, but that's the one I'm going to choose to try to suppress, suppress like my own, my own melanin. We are so, we're like, like the threat. The threat is not that we're dangerous and we're violent. That's just what they say. Mm-hmm. The threat is of what they perceive our ability is, you know? And so you, it's an understanding that this is something that was taught and we continue to pass that down. And that's why we continue to have that trauma, of course. But the only way we're going to be able to heal that trauma is not going to be by trying to wipe out ourselves. You, you know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I have grown to a point where I have their stories Yet, I no longer feel that way. I do now have love for the fact that I am not just black, but dark-skinned black. I don't appreciate a lot of the negative reviews, so to speak, that this product gets, right? (laughs) Even though everyone tries to make the the off-brand of this product Mm -hmm. all the fucking time. The name brand gets so much fucking negative fucking reviews. However, I still want to be the name brand. I still say that if I could do this life again, I would do it again. And I- so then are they not truly healed, right? 
because I know, I know, because I'm telling you that. But see, this is, and that's a part because that was my story. I felt like that was where it led for me in that particular aspect. I don't know how other people. I don't want to say that that's how other people are doing it, but if at the same time you are trying to be very intentional, you're actually going to go so far out of your way to make sure you don't bring another one of you into this world. I I can't sit here and say that you've completed that task of being healed. Of, is what you're of not healed in that aspect, right? I just no, I don't see that. Not to, and I'm not even saying that you have to want a dark skinned child to be healed. But you're not, it's not a matter of you not wanting a dark skin. It's, it's a matter of you making sure that no matter what, you take the route. It don't matter how, you know, how much you got to deviate to not have one. You know, it's so, it's, I'm wondering why people are surprised when, you know, we throw out the word self-hate. But it's so natural and normal that I don't resonate with that. This is not hate. I just don't like it. And it's so easy to say that I just don't want them to have the same trauma. So then what are you saying essentially? What then do we do about it? Because hmm. the answer seems to be don't have dark skinned kids. But love yourself. But don't fuck with people who look like you so that you don't make another you. Wait, so you're. But I kind of like learned, do you know what I mean? To like appreciate that or take the compliments and, uh, you know, understand that this is just going to be a thing. I thought all people who had dimples enjoyed having dimples. You know, I remember I told you, I don't know if I told you, I think I know, I know you've told me about this, but I I always just assume that like people who had dimples enjoyed having dimples because. Well, I probably would have. It had, again, we don't, we have these different experiences again that you, you get to be like in that hard window, like blind to because Mm -hmm. you can't have that experience. Um, it would have been, like for you, it would have just been like another day. But for, for a black girl, it's like you're pretty for a black girl, a dark skinned girl, and you got these dimples. Like, oh, the are moment you, you people smile. people expressly say that? Oh, yeah, people, okay. yeah, like, yeah, these are the, the real experiences that they talk about. People would expressly say those types of things, you know? Or like how the lady was talking about her mom was, was giving her all kinds of compliments, just blowing her up, and was like, and then said if she one. just had the little. Uh, just a little light and lightness in her. It was a little lighter. She'd be gorgeous. Yeah, that's like cool. she is a gym now. She is beautiful now, but she'd be gorgeous. Like just this everything, one thing. You, everything you said before that don't even matter anymore. Why? Side effects are. <laughs> yeah. Side effects of being. Uh. Uh. Oh, you're, you're gonna be a dark skinned quote unquote beautiful girl because these are the who they're talking to or they're fetishizing you. They don't even really see you. They just see the just really dark skin. So that's mm-hmm. another problem too with it. It's like you probably you haven't even probably glanced so much to pay attention to the features, which with darker skinned people it's usually kind of harder to see. You you kind of really have to zone in to pay more more like for real, you gotta you gotta go and do your Which do, features do are you research. talking about? Just that's like in general, right? Like people say, it's it's easier to see like the lighter features. That's why they're generally like two more attractive at night. Like saying the pictures and stuff when people are taking pictures, you got the light skin people, you got the darker people. You can't make out there like that's just fucking clear. You just go take a picture. We we'll put us all in there. Everybody got to adjust to our lighting if you gonna even want me in the shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a fact. Harder to see, harder to make out a lot of these details, and that's in actual life. In actual life and actual lighting, you catch us out at the club, mm, they're going to make out you easier. Someone who doesn't, you know, know people and they're scoping people in the crowd, they'll see you before they even see me. Mm-hmm. And then they got to take that little bit of extra time and attention to even pay attention to features. And so a lot of the times it's like you get all of these signals of, of you're otherwise ugly, but these things make you look nice whatever it is you learn differently how to appreciate your own beauty because so much shit is getting thrown at you about your looks generally pretty much out the womb Mm. (laughs) you know what i mean mean, i'm so glad the baby wasn't dark i'm so glad you know what i'm saying pretty much out the womb and it's so funny because that's what i was going to say too like when i say everybody's experience is different I don't know. I can't. It would take forever and a day to go over 
the journey to like loving self. I really had to get into who I was and why I liked that aspect of me. Um, And honestly, some of those things came out of the negative things that we experienced. You know, when people see the dark skin, people as ugly or inferior and all of this things, these negative things that they throw at, at, at you, it's not rooted in what you know of me, but what you see of me, you know? And I don't know, it's in a way I kind of take that as like power and all of that stuff. I think that was when those things really mattered. And that's when it really does matter for the kids and, and the teenagers and those going through puberty and coming, which is just like, it's really important then to kind of really be on them about that. Um, because it does get easier when you get older, but it's hard to see where to look and who to pay attention to because kids are so impressionable. And so at that point, even if boys like dark skinned girls, they're not saying it mm-hmm. because they got to follow the leader. They got to follow the leader, you know? So you, it's re- that, that's really when it's really tough for the little black girls, the little dark skinned girls. And some people will probably are, you know, cause there's stages, you know, I believe in stages in life. And so you might've, you know, reached the point where, you know, I'm realizing and understanding that this is who I am. I love myself. And, you know, I could see myself, wanting to um, continue this life and, and lineage and all of that. But, um, well, even if I don't, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm asserting that that I do love myself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not at the point of, like now I've put on that, that I've put on those shoes of loving myself, but now I'm learning how to walk in them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a good one. And so I think that 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 some people could be there, but that that doesn't take that long. Once you get to that point, right? Mm-hmm. You know, saying that I accept, then learning how to walk in it, and probably well, it depends and on the person. To exactly <laughs> relative, because you know where I'm going. It's like. Mm. But see, so so all these tangents, but yeah, that's what I was saying. You found the the it was like that it was still that whole thing perpetuated because that's what we were seeing. The the tall, dark, handsome black men, if you were gonna mm-hmm. if you were gonna be a black man and and you was gonna be in some shit, you know what I mean, then this was your role. The tall, dark, handsome, the you know what I mean? And uh, or the fucking drug addict, the thug, the you know what I mean. Whatever, but they, you know, come came to like that, but but of course it was always still the white women, like they said, like that white guy said, it was so hypocritical that in the videos that's all you wanted was these white women or these really light skinned women, mm. you know, and those were the roles, and that's what we saw, and those were the ones getting the record deal, even though <laughs> what are you looking at, huh? Oh, <laughs> and those are the ones getting the record deals, even if they didn't have the voice, aka Dream Girls, you know what I mean, um. And so one has the voice, one, the other voice is clearly better, but she's a bigger, don't put it over here, but she's a bigger dark skinned woman. You know what I mean? So, and that's, that's perpetuated in real life. And I, the most disheartening thing in that whole show. And the people do want that because of what they're, they're showing, you know what I mean? So yeah. Fed is the little girl in the whole who's smarter, who's prettier and all that yeah. sort of thing and i'm like how old yeah is she that's and a then... old experiment and yeah and it's so deeply rooted you know what i think would be an interesting experiment because i don't know if it's been done or not and i didn't do any research um but to show inner bias and have Somebody, you know, go on a jog, right? We're just going to um, run this test to see what your heart rate is. And, you know, you say you're this type of jogger. We just want to see. But then you have people who are like part of the experiment, experiment, right? And it's a black guy who's coming who, by you. Yeah, right. But then in one instance, they're friendly. In the next one, they're just concentrating on working out. But then you have a white guy who comes by, gives the same experience. White woman, black woman, or, you know, various races. Mm-hmm. And so people can be like, no, I don't see color. You know what I'm saying? But then it comes out in the heart rate, your yeah, the elevation, biological, yeah, whatchamacallit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I like that. I feel like something has been done like that on some scale. Um, I definitely know that on a definitely, uh, uh, you know, not because that would be really something you can't kind of negate. Well, you know what I mean? Really, mm-hmm. you really could if you wanted to catch them in a lie. Somebody could say like, no, it wasn't a black man. It was a dog I saw in the distance. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But yeah. it's, it might be really hard if you really control the substance of people to lie about that. So that's a really good one, you know, because it's like we see how you're interacting with people, you know? Yeah. Um, or we and we could see what your body was doing. So that's a yeah. good one. But on some scale, like on the, the What Would You Do show, you know, those oh, I love those shows. I want to be on one, but then I don't know exactly what I do sometimes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the person who didn't do shit in the background. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny. They say the statistics are that more black men are married to one black woman, but I guess that's like across the board. But there's still a disproportionate number of unmarried, darker skinned women. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so. We know who's getting taken up and then a lot of them going to white women. <laughs> well, it's interesting, though, because there's so many different shades of black that, that always have the same shades with each other. It's, you know, it's a little tougher, maybe, because I feel like if two white people get together, it's pretty much just white. It's just two white people. <laughs> maybe some tan more easily than others mm-hmm. now granted there's like nordic white where they're like very fair porcelain type like when i was in finland and stuff right that was like the like whitest i've probably experienced but still it's pretty i don't think there's as much variance in the skin tone so it's not like are you with that darker white woman you know what I mean? Like <laughs> their skin tones are more monochromatic, whereas <laughs> ours are. Um, but they're so, so very yeah. There's so much variance, yeah. Like yeah, and it's so dope. But it's like we are the any way to separate. Yeah, and you got to separate because I wonder, and you know, that was a good, that good question. Was that there prior to? But, you know, I I think, again, even if it was, do we give up? We as in the dark-skinned people. Do we just be like, all right, let's just let us die out. That to me is kind of like a self-hate. Like, where's the, where's the preservation in that? White people got racism because they don't want to fucking die out. <laughs> You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Why would we just sit here to our own people and fucking be like, okay, I guess I just won't have dark skin children. It's not funny, but I get what you're saying. Like, I don't know. I just It's cut off your nose to spite your face. Mm-mm. Right? No, well, I'm here to stay. You not know? you, but, yeah, the, but the guy who said that. So that was a pretty good discussion, a pretty long discussion. I did edit out some things, but I left it that way. For those of you who like to listen to long things, great. For those of you that don't, I'm sorry. You know, you can listen to it in chunks or hopefully you got something out of whatever you did listen up to. But, um, well, just, yeah, come back and finish the rest. But uh, I, I left it all in here because I feel like we did touch on a lot without touching on enough. And I could go on all day about it, so I'm not going to do it. But I do want to know what you all think. You know, some of the, the issues that it did bring up is, of course, unity, but overall unity, not just unity with the divide and colorism that we have, but unity for the overall community and uplifting ourselves. And if we have the colorism, that's still an issue. We can't even get to the, the, the major issue. All right. And, and it's like we have to run these these little races, these little qualifiers, we have to overcome these smaller barriers before we can tackle that mountain. Um, but in a sense, it's like, that's what you think you have to do, but really we're like doing it all at the same time, you know? And that's what we have to do. And so my question then becomes, considering, like the psychologist mentioned in the, uh, the, the documentary, considering how much of a head start the rest of the world has had. Um, like, I think I mentioned that in my last video. But considering how much of a head start the rest of the world has had and considering where we are now and where, where we've come, are we on track? 
did we have a fast start and then digress or become stagnant since then? Like, where do you all think we are as far as how far we've come? Because I don't want to say that we have a whole lot more work to do or that we got to do better. Like, we have, I feel like we can always do better. Anyone can always do better, right? But I do want to be empathetic to the fact that, hey, like, if some people have had a head start, if we didn't have the handicap that we have and the overall societal handicap that we have being in this oppressive position, and then without giving ourselves like this little pity party and without making it seem like we still can't overcome because yes we can right but we still understand the struggle right is this a good place or should we be a little bit further and if we should be further how, how much further where what should it look like right now for us in in your opinion whether that pertains to colorism or just unity as a whole just in the stance right like for example right now with this culture this current climate you see an uprise and an uptick and everyone saying support black businesses why hasn't it always been this way you know what i mean and i i mean we've kind of addressed that here but my question is why aren't we already there like should we already be there or is just exactly where we are supposed to be on this journey? Or did we, somewhere along the race, decide to take a break and then never got back up? And we just kind of got comfortable right here until we started seeing, you know, all this other stuff happen. I don't know, John. You tell me. But, yeah. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments below. And check out the skit. I'll be dropping that, like, maybe today or tomorrow for you all. And then... I'll see when I can be back for the rest, but make sure you share, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for supporting black businesses. <laughs> That's it. I, I forgot to mention, right, they spoke at the end of that documentary and, and I love how they was just saying, rise, dark girl, rise. And yeah, I do think that we were able to do that. I do think that we still have the ability to change that narrative and reframe the whole meaning of black and so uh and i think that that again is just going to be one more barrier that we are able to remove from the overall struggles that we have towards gaining what we should already have all right unity and equality so absolutely rise black folk rise dark girls rise Black girl be poetry. Still, she rise out of the drudgery of your dismissal, turning corruption into life. God in human form, God be black as night and no ways tired. She's Negro spiritual, the hymn to sing you free. Breaking every chain, she be all the strength you need. She be always surviving keeper of the soul does what no man can knows what no man knows yes she's an anthem the song of the land she gave this is hers home of the black woman she be the brave